Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulonto and I'm a photographer. And in this video, I'm gonna share my user experience with the Hasselblad X2D camera, a camera that makes gorgeous, beautiful 16-bit, 100 megapixel files. But before I go any further, I'd like to say big, big mm. thanks to Fimeco here in Helsinki, Finland. They represent Hasselblad cameras over here and they very very kindly lended me this X2D camera body and two lenses. On the camera I had the 55 f2.5 and uh, in my uh, left hand I have the 38 f2.5. Both gorgeous lenses. I absolutely love it how this camera looks and feels. It feels like a solid block of metal in a good way and I actually think that for the most part it is a solid block of aluminum or something and I love the simplistic user interface it's very like-a-like -like interface very uh, simplistic not too many buttons or dials but still pretty much everything is there the only thing that I miss is a joystick to move the autofocus point around. I wonder why they did not include it, especially for this price. There would be room here on the back of the camera for a small joystick. However, the touch screen is really nice and you can also relocate the autofocus point by touching the screen and that also works pretty well. Talking about the screen, it tilts up and down and when you tilt it up like this, you can use this the same way you would use that good old Hasselblad CM500, except that on this one the viewfinder image is not reversed like it would be on that CM500 waist level viewfinder. However, there's a minor problem if you want to shoot like this. The viewfinder covers the top side of the screen and uh, it obstructs the composition slightly. Uh, I wish the screen would move away from the camera body like it does on many cameras with the similar kind of screen. One feature I really, really like is the internal memory. This camera has a whopping one terabyte of internal memory. And on top of that, there is one CF Express Type A card slot. And I wish every manufacturer would include at least 256 gigabytes of internal memory in their cameras. At least if the camera is classified as a semi-pro or pro camera. With the internal memory, your camera would only need one card slot like this one. And you would also always have enough memory in your camera, even if you forget your card. This camera also has IBIS and it's a pretty good IBIS if you consider that the sensor is slightly bigger than a full frame sensor. I have the most beautiful still life here on the table and I have the 55 millimeter lens mounted on the camera. And now I'm gonna take a picture of this beautiful still life at half a second exposure time, standing up, handheld, no extra support. I'm focusing on the sticker on the banana. It's easy to tell if the text on the sticker is sharp or not. And let's have a go. Half a second, F 4.8, ISO 100. And look at that, tack sharp on the first go, not bad. Okay, I confess, I tried this a couple of times before I started filming and half a second is the maximum for me, maximum handheld speed for me using this 55 millimeter lens. However, with the 38 millimeter lens, I managed to get tack sharp pictures using one second exposure time. So all in all, I think the IBIS performance on this camera is quite impressive if you consider that this is bigger than full frame sensor. You probably noticed that the camera made no audible sound when I took the picture. And that is because the leaf shutter in these Hasselblad lenses is virtually silent. Another great feature and it allows you to be inconspicuous if you can with a camera like this, but at least you are not making a big noise. The amount of detail and tonality you get in these 16-bit 100 megapixel files is absolutely crazy. And I totally understand it, why people who own this camera, why they love those files so much. 
it's it's a lot of fun. If nothing else, it's a lot of fun just to examine those files and see the crazy amount of detail that you get. And I think it's also pretty awesome that I can go out and pretty casually snap away like on any camera and get that crazy amount of detail. For sure, for most situations, it's a total overkill. But who cares? If you can afford this camera, you might as well enjoy it and there's nothing wrong with that. And maybe this camera doesn't make you any better photographer, but it does not make you any worse either. I also think that whenever you buy a new type of camera, something that you've never had before, you probably had some ideas for that camera to begin with, but once you start using that camera, you'll probably start to see new possibilities for its key features. In this case, if you buy a high resolution camera like this, I think you'll start to look at some scenes with fresh eyes or you'll start to see some completely new subjects that might benefit from this high resolution sensor. But of course, you'd have to be willing and able to cough up quite a big pile of cash to be able to buy this camera. And for example, my personal photography at the moment is simply not worth it. I'm shooting street and documentary type of photos and I can see no major benefit from using a camera like this. When I was still doing paid assignments for clients, I would occasionally use a medium format digital camera, but I would rent the camera and my client would pay for it, so it was a slightly different situation. There is a minor downside with those 16-bit 100 megapixel files. They are pretty big and heavy on your computer, so you need a pretty powerful machine to be able to fluently browse them and process them. But I guess if you can afford this camera, you can also afford a proper computer that can easily handle these files. There is a very unfortunate trend going on with the camera manufacturers. They do not include a dedicated battery charger with their cameras. I mean, some do, but quite a few do not. And it's the similar situation with this camera. There is no dedicated battery charger in the box. You have to use the USB cable to charge the camera battery. You would think that for this price, they would include a dedicated battery charger in the box. I know already what Micro Four Thirds users are going to say about the size of this camera, but in real life it's not that bad actually, and this is not any bigger than many full frame cameras. And the grip on this camera is super, super comfortable, and I found that this camera was no pain or strain to carry around on a photo walk, for example. And I might even consider myself traveling with this camera, especially with the one camera, one prime lens strategy. This package uh, camera body and the 55, for example, is not too bad. And there are some other lenses that are even smaller than this. But of course, if you insist on carrying a camera body or two camera bodies and 10 lenses, then uh, a Hasselblad kit is probably not the ideal travel setup. Let's imagine a little bit. What if you had to spend 14,000 US dollars or euros on a camera and a couple of lenses? Would you take this setup or the Leica M11 and a couple of lenses? I know it's comparing apples and oranges, but let's imagine anyway. My choice would be this setup because this offers me something completely different compared to my existing full frame setup. The Leica M11 is a nice camera, but it's, I know those Leica fanboys are going to hate me for saying this, but the Leica M11 is just another full frame camera. <laughs> but this would offer me something completely different. But what would be your choice? It's been a true pleasure and a privilege to be able to shoot on this camera and admire those 16-bit uh, 100 megapixel files. I think everyone should experience this camera at least once or something similar, 100 megapixel camera. If you are lucky, you may be able to borrow it, but if that is not possible, rent it for a weekend 
and give it a go. And maybe after that you can better also understand those people who really love these cameras and use them every day. I know that someone is going to leave a comment that this camera makes no sense because you can't see the difference when you look at the pictures. But that is not important. What is important is that the photographer is happy. Imagine if you had a camera that you don't like and you don't like the photos either from that camera. Something in those files just doesn't look good to your eyes. But then your friend says that the pictures look awesome. Does that make you a happy photographer? Probably not. It makes you feel a bit better, but it doesn't make you like the camera or the pictures. And that's why some people like to shoot on their phone camera and some people like to use a Hasselblad or something else. So it doesn't really matter whether someone else can tell what camera the photographer used. What matters is that the photographer is happy. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little user experience with the Hasselblad X2D 100C camera. If you found this video entertaining or useful or whatever, please do consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland. Thanks so much for watching and joining in and I'll definitely see you in the next one.